So if you click this video, you've probably heard the term delete before in regards to a diesel truck or even a diesel car or SUV. And you might've heard different terms relating to it like DPF, DEF, and EGR delete. So I'm gonna go over the differences between these three things but first, we need to understand what these parts actually do when they're on your vehicle. I'll talk about where to buy delete kits at the end of this video. So you probably already know this, but all three of these things make up the emission system on your truck, and its goal is to reduce harmful emissions coming out of the tailpipe. So any diesel engine such as this 6.7 Cummins is going to emit two things into the environment. The first thing is called DPM, which stands for diesel particulate matter. But for this video, we're going to refer to that as soot, which as you probably know, is black smoke coming out the tailpipe. The second thing diesel engines emit is called NOx, which stands for nitrous oxide. Oh. Now NOx is a little bit different because you can't see it like soot. It's invisible and they say it's worse than soot. It's the main reason for the emission system. So NOx and soot are kind of like the yin and yang of a diesel engine. The higher the cylinder temperatures, the more NOx you get but because it's so high, it burns all the fuel so you get less soot. Now, if the cylinder temperatures are cooler, you lower the NOx, but then you don't burn as efficiently, so you get more soot out the tailpipe. So it's kind of funny because you have these different parts of the emission system that are literally fighting against each other. Now, let me explain. So starting with the EGR system, this is the first thing the exhaust is gonna enter. So this is an exhaust manifold off a of six, seven Cummins. The engine block would be right here. The exhaust would come out the engine into this exhaust manifold. And on an early pre-emission truck, it will just go through the turbo and out the tailpipe. But you see, we have these ports here. That is for the EGR cooler. So this is the EGR cooler and it actually sits up here on top of the exhaust manifold. So while most of the exhaust will still go through the turbo and out the tailpipe, some of the exhaust is gonna come up these ports out of the exhaust manifold and enter this EGR cooler. And if you look inside this EGR cooler, it looks very similar to a radiator. So the hot exhaust goes into the exhaust manifold through those ports into this EGR cooler, which has coolant running through it to cool the temperatures of the exhaust. It's gonna travel through this pipe to the EGR valve, which is right here. And then from this EGR valve, it's gonna re-enter the engine. So on my truck, that EGR valve used to sit right here. This is your intake horn. This is where all your fresh air going into the engine is. And it dumps some exhaust back into your fresh air intake. So now you've just put some inert gas back into your cylinder, which basically means it's already been combusted. There's no oxygen left for it to combust. So it's going to cool your cylinder combustion temperatures, which as we now know, lowers NOx emissions. So yay, good, right? We've lowered NOx. That's great. Wrong. Now we've lowered the efficiency of the engine. We're not burning all the fuel that is in the cylinder. And now that unburnt fuel is coming out the tailpipe as soot, which means we've increased the soot level. Now enter the DPF. So DPF, as we know, stands for diesel particulate filter. In simpler terms, it's a soot filter. As you can see inside, it's all honeycomb filter. And it can filter the exhaust down to like one micron. So the exhaust enters into this DPF and all that soot gets trapped in the filter. Which is good, right? Now we've solved NOx and we've solved soot, right? Wrong. What happens with the DPF over time, and in some cases it can happen quite frequently, is it will get filled with soot and actually plug up. So now you have a lot of exhaust back pressure acting against the engine. You've lowered your fuel efficiency and the exhaust is really struggling to push through that DPF. So what do we do? We burn it to hell. We add more fuel. We add higher RPMs and we get this thing piping hot. I'm talking over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit hot. The truck is going to inject more fuel and increase the combustion temperatures to create enough heat to burn all that soot out of the DPF. But Kyle, didn't we just lower cylinder temperatures and now you're increasing it? Wouldn't that mean more NOx? Yes, Timmy, you're absolutely correct. Jenny! Now we have increased our NOx emissions. Now enter SCR. You probably thought I was gonna say DEF, didn't you? But no, first, this is the SCR, which stands for Selective Catalytic Reduction. The automakers were like, how are we going to reduce NOx while increasing cylinder temperatures to do those regens to burn the soot out of the DPF? And then they thought, let's use the periodic table of elements. So now we're regening to burn up the soot out of the DPF. The EGR is not doing shit right now. So we have a ton of NOx flowing through this SCR and we don't want them to go out the tailpipe. So what do we do? We add DEF, D-E-F, 
which stands for diesel exhaust fluid. Right here, you see, this is the DEF injector. You'll have a tank on your vehicle full of DEF, and it's gonna inject the fluid in here at the beginning of the SCR. So DEF is pretty much just ammonia. And when you mix ammonia with nitrous oxide, you get, that's right, Timmy. Get it! Water and nitrogen. Now, as we know, water is totally fine and nitrogen is everywhere in the air. That's totally fine. So now we're good. We have solved the problem. Well, kinda. We've now solved the problem of emitting harmful emissions of the tailpipe, but we haven't began to talk about how bad a lot of this stuff is for your engine. This EGR system is putting exhaust back into your engine. <laughs> and there's soot in your exhaust. What happens is some of that soot is actually bypassing your piston rings and entering your oil, which means your oil is going to get dirty much faster. The lubricity is also, is that a word? Its lubrication abilities is going to lessen. This can be very bad for small oil passages, your bearings, especially in these new trucks. They got hydraulic lifters. They're very finicky. They need clean oil. If you're running unclean oil in your vehicle, you're gonna have a bad time. Back to the DPF. This thing is restrictive. It lowers fuel efficiency, especially when it's doing a regen. It's just dumping fuel in those cylinders. And probably the most annoying of them all is the SCR in combination with the diesel exhaust fluid. So if you didn't know this, DEF actually freezes at 12 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 11 degrees Celsius. So they have to put a heater in the DEF tank. And that heater is probably the number one cause of failures I see on modern diesel engines. And that heater fails, it throws a code, you have to go see the dealer, or your truck gets put in limp mode with a max speed of five miles per hour. There's also all these sensors, every single sensor. There's probably like literally 20 of them on the emission system. If any of those sensors fail, it will put your truck into limp mode. Trust me, it happened on my truck. I had 2,000 kilometers on this truck, brand new off the lot. My death system messed up and it stranded me in Banff in the Rocky Mountains on a snowboard trip. Which brings us around to the real reason I made this video, to talk about deletes. So now when you hear the term EGR delete, you know they're talking about removing that EGR system off the truck. DPF delete, removing the diesel particulate filter off the truck. And DEF delete, which is removing the SCR off of your truck, usually happens at the same time as the DPF. You could also remove the DEF tank at this time if you wish to do so. Basically, removing all this stuff. So now that we've entered the territory of talking about deletes, I do want to say something. First of all, I make these videos for everywhere in the world. Anyone can watch them. In a lot of places in the world, they don't give a crap if you delete your truck. But in some places, it is illegal. So if you're thinking about deleting your truck, I would urge you to look up the local laws and stay in accordance with them. If it's illegal where you live, I wouldn't do it. But now that I've got that out of the way, let's talk about the different kinds of deletes. In simpler terms, there's really only two types of deletes. There's just a DPF delete, or there's a full delete. No matter what delete you're doing, you have to first program the ECM. If you just rip all this stuff off your truck, it's gonna go into limp mode. So you have to program it to tell it, hey, we don't have that emission stuff anymore. And it's gonna say, yippee, that's awesome. Let me show you what I can really do now. All right, so we've tuned the truck. It's gonna run without the emissions. Now the first stage of the delete is the DPF and the SCR. The tune is gonna disable the whole entire emission system, but you don't have to remove the EGR. You can just pull this exhaust out of the vehicle and put a new exhaust with none of these filters or sensors in it. Just a standard old school exhaust. There's a few different options for exhaust. You can get delete pipes, which literally just replace these sections of pipe and you reuse your factory tailpipe. You could get a full four inch exhaust or you could get a full five inch exhaust. I'll talk about where to buy delete kits at the end of this video. So if you're just doing the half delete, like I said, you can leave the EGR on the truck, but you're still gonna unplug it. Once the truck is tuned to run without emissions, it's disabling the whole entire emissions. But they always recommend unplugging the EGR because sometimes it can give you weird issues if you leave it plugged in. And in pretty much all cases, you also have to unplug the throttle valve. I think the only trucks you don't unplug the throttle valve on are like a 2.8 liter Duramax. So you might be thinking, well, Kyle, if the EGR is not functioning anyways, why would I bother removing it? Which brings me to the full delete. If you wanna do a full delete, that means you've removed the exhaust and now you're gonna remove the EGR. So this is the EGR valve that lets exhaust gas back into your engine. Now, mine is like brand new, so it should be functioning properly. And with the truck tuned, that valve should never open under any circumstances, therefore not letting any exhaust back into your engine. But the only way to be 100% certain of that is to physically remove it off your truck. 
You might have an EGR valve that's stuck open just a little bit and it's constantly letting exhaust back into your engine. You wouldn't want that. You're not gonna be able to tell unless you just remove it. Another reason is that this whole entire area of my engine bay used to be full of the EGR system. So it really opens it up and gives you a lot more room in your engine bay. And if you're doing other performance mods, say you're going like bigger turbos and that kind of stuff, you want better piping for better airflow. Typically, none of that stuff is gonna have anywhere for the EGR to sit anyways, so you're gonna have to remove it. So Kyle, where do I buy a delete kit? Well, Timmy, I'm glad you asked. I work with a company that ships delete kits worldwide. They use good parts and the tunes they use are really good. Tuning is probably the number one most important thing when you're deleting your truck. You wanna make sure you're running good, reliable, reputable tunes. I will put a link down in the description. I'll just title it Delete Kits. Click on that link, it'll take you to a company. I work with them, I've used their products. I know guys that run their products. Great company to work with, really good customer support. And if you think the link looks a little bit funny, I will say it is an affiliate link. So if you click that link and then you buy something, I do make a small commission. I'm doing this full time now. So basically I'm living off of ad revenue from YouTube and commissions from sales online. They have delete kits for basically every pickup truck on the market with a diesel engine. Some of the newer ones, they haven't figured out how to tune them yet, but they're constantly adding more to their website. A lot of their kits will come with multiple tunes. You'll see SOTF, I always call it soft, but it's, it's not soft. But that stands for shift on the fly and it's typically a knob where you can switch between five tunes. You have like a more mild or stock horsepower tune and then as you turn the switch, they just increase in power levels. One thing about the switch though, I don't recommend switching it nonstop all the time. Try to just pick a setting you like and leave it in that. The switches come in handy though when you use your truck for personal, but you also use it for towing. So you could drive around in like a level three or a four, but then say, hey, we gotta take the fifth wheel up to the lake for the weekend. You're gonna wanna dial that tune back to like I'd say two probably. You want to have a lower horsepower when you're towing because as you increase your power, you're increasing your combustion temperatures. And now if you have increased combustion temperatures and you put a big load on your truck, you're going to increase them even more. And if they get too high, that's when guys will start having issues with like head gaskets. But if you're responsible and you tow in a lower horsepower tune, you shouldn't have any problems. Pretty much all their kits come with EGR deletes as well. And like I said, you don't have to physically remove the EGR, but it's nice having that kit on your shelf in case you ever decide you want to do that. Sometimes EGR coolers have been known to crack over time. And if that EGR cooler cracks, now you're gonna get exhaust pressure into your cooling system, which can cause issues like overheating. You might think you have a head gasket problem, but really it's just a cracked EGR cooler. That's why I'd say it's best to just get rid of it. With deleting your truck, you'll typically see an increase in fuel efficiency. Your truck will run better. It'll sound super awesome. And you increase the power level. But like I said, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna run it on like the max setting all the time and like pretend you're driving a Lamborghini. If you drive it like an idiot, you're gonna have problems. It's just the way life works. The best way to drive a diesel truck is to actually roll into the power as you're building boost. It's not a gas vehicle. You don't wanna just stomp on the accelerator. You wanna roll into it. As you see those boost pressures come up, you wanna give it more throttle. If you're on the highway and you gotta pass somebody, don't floor it. Simply accelerate, let it build boost, and then just roll into the power, pass the person, and then let off gently. That will save you a lot of transmission problems if you drive your truck properly. But we're starting to get a little bit off topic here. I could talk all day about this kind of stuff, but I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. If you guys want to show your support, you can go to darkirondiesel.com. I actually have links to all the different delete kits for the different makes and models of trucks on my website. If you go to the delete kit section, I also sell super sweet merch. Got pretty cool logos on the back. Shoot me a follow on Instagram at Dark Iron Diesel. And recently I just purchased this dyno. So I'm gonna have a lot of dyno content coming in the near future. A lot of dyno comparisons, a lot of before and afters. So we can see how much power you're really gaining from certain aftermarket parts. So if that's something you're into, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you on another video soon. I can't take no loss.